Dr. Suzanne Briest. Welcome back to eCancer TV. This is your second uh, showing. And the last time we were talking uh, about uh, European meeting, big mm -hmm. conference in, in Europe, and this is ASCO. Yeah. So you are a sinologist, that's right. Medical oncologist, and you work in Leipzig. Gynecologist. I, you have a different terminology in, uh, I know. in, in practice in Germany from, uh, from yeah. the rest of the world. So, um, you, you know, you come here to see whether you're going to change your practice uh, next week when you, go, when you go back to Germany. Are you? That's right. What's, what's come up? It's kind of uh, difficult to, to summarize it yeah. because uh, until now, I mean, we are still in the meeting. Tomorrow we have another day. But uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed of this this year ASCO. I mean, it's always a great opportunity to meet people, to come together, to exchange experiences and everything. But we didn't have these real, you know, practice changing phase three trials we heard about or we saw in other meetings in other years. So, I mean, we had uh, this morning a very interesting oral session about breast cancer, uh, early breast cancer, and there were three trials reported about sentinel node biopsy and one trial reported about radiation in patients with lumpectomy versus no radiation in uh, older patients. These were, to my mind, the most interesting parts until now. Then we heard a little bit of uh, the relation in between obesity and uh, response to therapy, which seems to be a real practice, uh, let's say, influencing factor because many of our people Negatively. are obese. Yes, of course. And we heard a very nice update of the Women's Health Initiative yesterday, mm -hmm. which showed us that uh, against our assumptions that uh, women who were on hormone uh, replacement therapy and develop breast cancer. These women had not uh, hormonal positive breast cancer, as we would assume, but they had more HER2 positive breast cancer, which was a, a completely new fact for everybody, I suppose. And the death rate was doubled in this group as well. So this is something we have to discuss really with our patients. If we, I am a gynecologist, as I said, so sometimes I have to, to discuss also hormonal replacement therapy mm -hmm. for women because they have these problems and you know, they wanna have something, they ask you, what can we do against? And I think with this new data, we have a lot more in our hands to, to give them uh, good advice what sure. to do. And is that hormone replacement therapy uh, combination, or is that uh, uh, only estrogen or, or estrogen progesterone? Uh, and is there a dose dependence or a, or a, or a duration dependence, um, which came out of the million women study in, uh, in Oxford? Uh, the result was they used the combination. Right. And between progestin and, and, and estrogen. Understood. And we uh, assume that the, uh, progesterone is a bad dog yeah. <laughs> or yeah. bad player yeah. in this part. Yeah. So that's why if you do a hormonal replacement therapy, you would try to, to avoid a high dose of, of, of progesterone, of course. But uh, until now, we thought if you give it in a very short time, uh, only to, to uh, cover the symptoms of mm -hmm. the patients, it would be okay. But even with a short time uh, duration of treatment, you will have these negative effects on breast cancer probably. Other things that caught your eye? Um, not really. As no. I told you, I mean, I found it really intriguing that uh, one trial about uh, radiation in elderly women, elderly means uh, more than 70 years old, hormone receptor positive, uh, early breast cancer. And there was a very nice comparison in between radiation and tamoxifen versus tamoxifen. And finally, it turned up that there is no difference in survival. And I think this is the main aim we have in, in, in cancer therapy. So I think this is really something we have to, to, uh, uh, to discuss with our patients now. I mean, if you could spare them the radiation, sure. it would make a lot of benefit for these sure. even a little bit older patients. Sure. But then, of course, the local problems when you don't irradiate can be quite nasty with ulceration and... and this is after lumpectomy. This so the tumor is removed with clear margins. This okay. was, and uh, it was a tumor less than two okay. centimeter. Right. And there were more inverse uh, recurrences, but even with these recurrences, you didn't have a uh, 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 relation to the overall survival. So that's why it was kind of interesting. Suzanne, thank you very much again for uh, coming and telling us of your uh, views on the breast cancer research. Thank, thank you so much for inviting it. me.